Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this whole video, we're gonna look at the case of Skylar de Leon. This case really began on the waters off Newport Beach, California, on a boat called the Well Deserved, a 55-foot yacht owned by Tom and Jackie Hawks. They were living their best life, as people say. But when they decided they wanted to sell the Well Deserved and move down to Arizona to be closer to their new grandbaby, Skylar de Leon arrived inquiring about taking it off her hands. And things uh, took a turn for the worse from there. Alright, let's set sail. Tom Hawks grew up in California, a military veteran, a former probation officer too. He got married and together with his wife had two boys. They would eventually divorce and he would raise the two lads by himself. He would later marry Jackie and she quickly became a close stepmother to Tom's two lads. They were both hard workers, scrimped and saved. Tom and Jackie were able to retire. In November 2000, Tom and Jackie paid 300 thousand bucks for a 55-foot yacht, the well-deserved. Aptly named for this hard-working, loving couple. Jackie's coming today, got the boat all cleaned up, and I think I'm gonna take a shower after I work out and shave my beard. Not a bad beard for 15 days, huh? Ah, so waiting to see her. This is Captain Tom Hawks and well deserved. Jackie, hello. Hi, honey. I'm so glad to be home. She's home. Man, this is scary. I'm going to go play some more. Okay. Be careful, honey. He's great. <laughs> Almost got ya. They loved the boat. It was their like dream life. They lived on it. That's where they lived. And they would just travel everywhere, up and down the California coastline, down to Mexico, just having a just having a grand old time. They had been living on this boat for two whole years when they got the news. First grandchild en route, ETA nine months. Tom was overjoyed to hear about the arrival of the little one. As was Jackie, who had been in a motorcycle accident at a young age and was unable to have children of her own. And so, with the arrival of their first grandchild, without much hesitation, it was like, yep, all right, enough of this sailing and all that shit. We're gonna be granny and granddad. So, Tom and Jackie took out an ad in a boating magazine, Yachting World, to sell the well-deserved, asking for $435,000, which is quite a markup when they bought it for 300. Tom and Jackie went on their final boating trip in November 2004. Catalina Island. They had a good offer on selling the boat at this stage and, you know, with a child actor, by the way, nonetheless, holy smokes, child actor. That's the dollar dollar bills, if you ask me. And so, let's have a final trip. Enjoy the boat one last time. Jim, Donnie, Brian and Vicky, this is our last trip to the island because uh, we sold the boat. And we're all having a really good time. Now she's filming us. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jackie. I'm so glad you could join us on our last voyage on Well Deserved. What are they calling? It was good while it lasted until, you know, let's move on. Until no one could get a hold of them anymore. Their sons couldn't get through to them on the phone. They would always inquire about their new grandson, and they hadn't done so for a few days, which was very, very unlike them. Here we are in the early morning. Jerry Skipper, we're listening to the news, and there's Big Jim, and we're going to be doing some fishing here. Tom's brother, Jim Hawks, who lived in San Diego and used to be the chief of police, he then, being the closest to them, went to see what he could see. It was very disconcerting that no one had heard from them in a couple of days. Jim Hawks arrived at Newport Beach and found the well-deserved but no sign of Tom or Jackie, and no sign of their car. The dinghy Tom and Jackie used to travel from the dock to the well-deserved, it was there to dock, but like it wasn't tied up properly. 
And then when Jim went out to the well-deserved, it was like things were just, just a bit off, a bit, a bit messy. Tom and Jackie were very, you know, clean. Towels were hanging out of the place. It just something was just off about the well-deserved. And still no sign of Tom or Jackie as the days went on. So, well, you know, everybody asked, and, you know, when was the last time you heard from Tom and Jackie? When was the last time you'd heard from Tom and Jackie? Turned out the last time anyone had heard from the Hawks was when they went out on that, you know, with the new buyers for a test, test sale. And they, they hadn't been heard from since then. So, um, that was weird. That had been on November the 15th, 2004. So, who were these, you know, prospective buyers who now seemed like they owned the boat? Just, just very strange. Jim then left a note on the well-deserved, essentially saying, I'm a retired cop. I'd like to speak with whoever bought the boat because the previous owners are now missing. And not long after Jim did this, he was contacted by a woman named Jennifer de Leon. And she was like, yep, we bought the boat. It's ours, so don't try and take it off us. Um, yeah, but we, you know, we bought the boat fair and square, but after that, Tom and Jackie, they just left. They just drove off, fucked off somewhere we actually want to get true to them too we need to talk to him yeah hey we need to talk to him because uh we you know we need a an instruction manual how do you drive a boat i don't know i don't know where they are i think they I think they said something about uh mexico investigating further though there was no activity on the hawks bank account and they had apparently quite a lot of money as uh the jennifer de leon said her and her husband skyler paid in cash $435,000 is a lot of money. And so, on November 26th, 2004, missing persons reports were filed for both Tom and Jackie. And the police start looking into the new owners of the well-deserved, Skylar and Jennifer de Leon. 25-year-old Skylar de Leon, it turned out, had a criminal record, having been in the slammer for armed burglary. He was on probation at the time. Skyler was born John Julius Jacobson. His father was a drug dealer. He was a child actor, though it seemed his dad just wanted to get him to act to make some dollar dollar bills off of him. His biggest claim to fame was as an extra in Power Rangers. Go, go, Rangers! You guys were great! I'm not sure if he should go around telling people he's a child actor. I'm not sure if that really counts. Later, he joined the Marines. He got into Force Recon. Holy shit, watch out, ladies and gentlemen. He claimed to have gotten 60 confirmed kills. You know, was popping heads off left and right. And after he left the Marines, he changed his name to Skylar de Leon. By the way, that was a lie. He told people he was like this deadly killer in, you know, top of the top of Special Forces in the Marines. Um, and he wasn't. He joined the, Marine, the Marines for like two weeks and then just left, went AWOL. So, he was just full of shit. Shortly after, he met Jennifer Henderson online. And they done married. And by the time Skylar bought the well-deserved, he had one kid and another on the way. And they were deep in the shit, money-wise. 90,000 bucks in debt, living in Jennifer's parents' garage. So, it was pretty interesting to people that Skylar de Leon, who was deep in debt already, would pay over 400,000 bucks in cash for a boat, and he knows nothing about boats. Detectives went out to the well-deserved and started taking pictures, and they found a receipt. On the receipt was some interesting purchases, namely bin bags, bleach, and tums. In case someone's tummy gets a bit uppity after using bleach and bin bags, what do you use bleach and bin bags for? So the police have this receipt from Target, and they go to the store where these items were purchased. And see, it wasn't Skylar who purchased them, it was someone else. The big guy! Turns out it was Steve Henderson, Jennifer's dad. The police pay him a visit and go see Skylar and Jennifer. And from there, they get from Skylar and Jennifer, well, what appears to be perfectly legal, notarized documents of the sale. Everything looks legit as shit. So, everything seems fine and dandy, all the documents are legal. Okay, weird, but... I mean, how'd you pay for the boat? 
very concerned and that's understandable. I mean, there's been 15 days and mm -hmm. you can imagine they have children, right. grandchildren, you know, they're and and exactly. Yeah. So did you say, hey, look, this is royalties from acting or did you even have to bring it up? How you got the uh, money? I mean, totally. I did Power Rangers and stuff like that. Skyler says he bought the boat with the money he stole from the armed robbery he did and was on probation for, which is illegal. He admits to money laundering. Obviously, this raises a few eyebrows, but he sticks to his story, says, okay, the money I used was kind of illegally used, but the sale was legit. Everything here was done properly. I gave them the money in cash and they drove off. I never saw them again. He sticks to that story. And it seems like that story is true at the time. But the police find one more thing, which is kind of interesting. The Hawks had given Skylar de Leon the power of attorney. Which is quite strange why he would give them complete control of every all their accounts. Kind of weird. Was that part of the sale too? They also had footage of Skylar and Jennifer trying to withdraw money from the Hawks' bank account. Now, they weren't allowed to by the bank manager, but that's just weird. So, Skylar's explanation for this was that, oh yeah, you know, I told you, I think Tom and Jackie went to Mexico. It's kind of a complicated process to buy a house in Mexico. And he was like, I'm just going to be the middleman. This is easier if you give me all your stuff and I'll do it for you. No big deal. Perfectly innocent. The one thing that was strange, though, was on the power of attorney document. Jackie had spelled her name Hawk, not Hawks. And then it seemed like someone else added the S. The S was, you know, it was different handwriting. On the bill of sale was also the name Alonzo Machine as a witness. Who's he? Well, Skylar said he was a friend from Mexico. Also someone he happened to meet in prison, though he was a prison guard. The police go and speak to Alonzo. He tells the exact same story as a Skylar. Yep, it was all legit, signed, sealed, delivered, gave them the money, they drove off. The police speak to the notary, who signed off on the documents, gave them the stamp of approval to make them legal. She tells the exact same story. Everything was legit. So the police really are scratching their ass at this point. They have no idea what's going on. They're twisting their noodle. So with Jack shit to go on, Tom and Jackie still missing. Very unlike them to be missing. Maybe they did go down to Mexico. People's stories get, make sense in a way, but it's unlike them not to have contacted their family. The police finally turn to the media for help and start public pleas for attention. Anyone see something? say something. Right now our focus is on locating them and also the vehicle that they own, this 1998 Honda CRV with an Arizona license plate. And it worked. Guess what? Someone found Jackie and Tom's car down old Mexico way. They were eyeballing it and were like, yeah, it's here. The police are thinking, okay, maybe this is actually legit. Maybe they went down to Mexico. They go, find the car, knock, 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 and the door, the car is outside of. Hopefully, please, please God, it'll be Tom and Jackie opening the door. It wasn't, because of course it wasn't. A guy comes out and says a fella named Skylar de Leon gave him the car. And Skylar's DNA was found there in the car. That was the final piece of the puzzle. And the police are pretty sure Skylar did something to the Hawks. Something like murder. When the police get back, they arrested Skylar. They searched the De Leon's apartment and find the Hawks video camera, their laptop, and a police officer's calling card, which leads them to another unsolved case, the case of John Jarvie. The police officer's card was there because he was investigating a unsolved murder, the murder of John Jarvie. John Jarvie was someone Skylar de Leon met in prison. John Jarvie was found in Mexico with his throat cut. This all happened a year before the Hawks disappeared. What happened was this. Skylar told John Jarvie, I've got this sweet investment deal in Mexico. 55k is all I need. I'm gonna turn it around for you. You're gonna get, you know, mucho dineros, baby. So John Jarvie did that. And we know how that ended. Skylar de Leon actually did this while on day release from prison you know, for the armed uh, burglary. So he drove down with John Jarvie, killed him, took his money, drove back, and went into prison again for the night. What a guy. Which actually probably isn't the right term for him, but we'll get to that. The police then went back and interviewed who they viewed as the most trustworthy, believable person involved in the case, 
the notary who notarized the power of attorney and bill of sale documents. The one who was, you know, still sticking to the story, I saw Skylar and the Hawks sign off of everything. I signed off of everything. It was all legit. Until she said it wasn't. She would eventually admit that Skylar had brought her the documents to pre-signed, she never met the Hawks, Skylar paid her in cash to just sign off on it. Next, they went back to the other person they knew was involved in this, Alonzo Machine, and he opened up to the police about what really happened, and it is a very disturbing story. I'm asking you, if at all possible, to just be as honest as you possibly can be. It would help us get the puzzle together and, and know the truth. Scholar approaches me with this, uh, this plan he has. He was going to do something that, you know, was going to make some money. So he offers me to help him. The plan was is that we were supposed to basically kidnap them and take them out to sea and toss them overboard. Skylar contacted Tom Hawks over the phone and arranged a meeting to view the boat. Skylar brought Alonzo with him to meet the Hawks and view the well-deserved, but when he did so, Tom was suspicious. Young guys, something off about them, how can they afford this? So what Skylar did then was call his pregnant wife, Jennifer, and got her to come down with the kid. Doing the whole, oh hey, I'm a family man, come on, you know, I'm trustworthy. But Tom was a big guy. Skylar and Alonzo were not. Tom could have taken them both. So, Skylar called up another friend, one we haven't mentioned yet. JFK, yay, yeah, he dug him up. This John Fitzgerald Kennedy was a local gangster, and again, Skylar knew him from prison. So, they all headed off on a test sail of the boat, but Jennifer and the baby stayed at the dock. On the boat was Tom, Jackie, Skylar, Alonzo, and JFK. They headed out from Newport Harbor toward Catalina. And somewhere on that trip, they overpowered the Hawks. Oh, here, this is where actually Alonzo had to overpower Jackie. It sounds like Jackie's here, Alonzo's here, and then um, that's where Thomas Hawks, Skyler, and Jeff Care on the bottom. And Jackie hears the, the commotion. She looks down this way, and this is where Alonzo overpowers her. And this is actually where they bring him up one at a time to do all the paperwork signing. Scholar sits his skinny ass little right down here and is typing in all their info. And we've got the time that he's inputting all that stuff on, on the forensic on the computer so we can know what time they're alive still. They tied them up and forced them to sign the documents. Jackie deliberately signed her name Jackie Hawk, not Hawks, to try and show that something was wrong. And Larry, this is the bed where Tom, Tom's overpowered down here, and then Jackie and Tom are put on the bed here and uh, basically uh, restrained. They're duct taped, handcuffed, and put on the bed. And this is when you hear the part about Tom um, stroking her hand, the curves down here to put her at ease. I don't like being down here. Then they handcuffed Tom and Jackie to an anchor and set course for a much deeper part of the ocean. They didn't know what was going on, and then Mr. Hawk was able to uh, lift his legs somehow, and he tossed Skyler off his feet and knocked him on his butt. By like kicking him? Yeah, and right behind him, the black guy just takes a big swing at his, at his side of his head, and just I'm pretty sure he knocked him out. Skylar then picked up the anchor Tom and Jackie were handcuffed to and threw it in the water. Tom and Jackie were still alive when they went in after it. What was Skylar acting maybe while this was happening? He was, he was calm. This is while they were being bound, bound and tossed overboard? He yeah, calm. he was calm. He was like, it was the... Uh the most normal thing. And the worst part is they were downstairs for several hours knowing they're gonna, I mean, they knew they were gonna die. At least Tom Hawks did, I'm pretty sure. And this is where they're t secured and tied up. And uh, we, we, the, from what uh, Alonzo's telling us is that uh, Thomas Hawks and Jackie Hawks are here. Thomas Hawks' his belly's for her back. They're tied up, handcuffed. I'm assuming they brought the anchor back this way. He mule kicks. Skylar here, and JFK is someone in this area where he punches 
Thomas Hawk, not, Alonzo says that it, he goes limp as if he, he went unconscious or at least stunned. She's she being Jackie is screaming through her tape, you know, through the tape now because now she's supporting her husband's weight, doesn't know what's going on. They're under, it's underway. The boat's underway. It's cold. It's at nighttime, and uh, as soon as Jeff K hits them and they fall, Skyler gets back up, picks up the anchor, walks right here and tosses it right out, and it's feeding the line that they've tied to them, and they're knocked down because Jeff K hit them. I pushed them down, and then they get just that's the line feeds out and just throws them right out. And apparently, she strikes from from what his description very hard on this quarter right here. Mercer, maybe she was. Well, you know what? Once again, I try to sanitize it and think, please, you know, the both yeah. of them you were unconscious. You yeah, you hope that they didn't suffer more than they already had to. Skyler and Jennifer pled not guilty throughout. They had nothing to do with this. Jennifer was arrested not long after. She said she only went along with it because she feared Skyler might kill her too. She got life without parole. JFK got the death penalty. Alonzo Machine got 20 years. In 2008, Skyler himself went on trial, on trial for the murder of three people. By the way, at one point while in jail, Skyler did the old try to pay someone to get rid of the witnesses, which tends to come back and bite you in the ass, when this guy testified against Skyler. His trial ended with the death penalty. Lethal injection. And that's what happened. So why did they do this? Well, uh, Skyler was transgender. And it's believed he murdered the Hawks and murdered John Jarvey. Um, so he could pay for, get the sealer money and pay for a gender reassignment surgery. Before what happened on The Well Deserved, Skyler had put down 500 bucks for surgery. One of the reasons he changed his name to Skyler was that Skyler is a gender neutral name. And, oof, at one point while in prison, Skylar attempted to, uh, oof, that's, he attempted to do the job himself. He got a, he got a sheet, tied it around his junk, and got a razor blade. Over the years since, Skylar and Jennifer divorced, and Skylar now identifies as a woman. She legally became a woman in 2019. She petitioned to have the state pay for her surgery, though the state of California so far denied the procedure as it is not medically necessary. Also, she killed people to pay for the surgery in an extremely dark and disturbing way, handcuffing them to an anchor and throwing the anchor overboard. Bad. Um, so, you know, now that you're in prison for doing that, trying to get the state to pay for it, seems a bit like cheating. Though that's, a, that's an entirely different argument. Tragic irony that Tom and Jackie's lives ended on the well-deserved when what happened to them was anything but. They are still classed as missing, uh, their bodies have never been recovered from the Pacific, and it's unlikely they ever will be. And that's the case of Skylar de Leon. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.